The following is a summary of the film Passage to India, directed by David Lean in 1984. Set around the 1920s, A Passage to India is the story of two women's experiences of British-occupied India and the relationships between the British and the Indians there. The two women are Mrs Moore and Miss Quested, her prospective daughter-in-law. Together, they travel from England to the fictional town of Chandrapur in India. The purpose of their visit is to see Ronnie Heaslop, Chandrapur's city magistrate and Mrs Moore's son. Having previously met him in England, Miss Quested goes to India to decide whether or not she wants to marry him. Both women want to experience an authentic India, and after meeting Mr Turton, the chief administrator and tax collector of Chandrapur, they express a desire to meet the local Indians. However, Turton tells them that the English do not socialise with the Indians there, and his wife, Mrs Turton, is openly racist, telling them this decision is a question of culture. Mrs Moore and Miss Quested find Mrs Turton's attitude dreadful, and when they arrive in Chandrapur, their desire to meet Indians and to discover the real India remains. Although Mrs Moore gets to meet a real Indian when she comes across the Muslim physician, Dr Aziz, Miss Quested still longs to see something of the real India and asks to meet some Indians too. As a result, the Turtons organise a party at the British Club in order to bridge the gulf between East and West. However, the party is a disaster for both women. Mrs Moore finds it unnatural and Miss Quested is ashamed of how rude the English are towards their Indian guests. As a result, Mr Fielding, the principal of Government College, suggests that they meet some of his Indian contacts and Miss Quested asks if Dr Aziz can attend since Mrs Moore had found him to be charming. Fielding and Aziz meet for the first time and soon become fast friends. Godbilly, an orthodox Hindu and a professor of philosophy, also attends the tea party, describing Mrs Moore as someone who has been reincarnated many times. It is here that Aziz, eager to avoid the shame of having the women see his home, suggests an alternative excursion to the Marabar Caves, a place which he believes to be a wonder of India. After the tea party, Miss Quested, unhappy with Heaslop's attitude towards the Indians and with no evidence of him having any romantic interest in her, tells him that they will not be getting married. Still eager to experience an authentic India, Miss Quested goes exploring alone on her bike. She discovers the ruins of a Hindu temple and statues of men and women engaged in sexual acts. The statues cause her to become flustered and she changes her mind about marrying Heaslop. However, the sexual images continue to occupy her thoughts, as does the nature of love, for Heaslop, now her fiancé, remains indifferent to her. When Fielding and Godbilly miss the train to the Marabar Caves, Aziz is so anxious to please the English ladies that he considers himself destroyed. Meanwhile, Fielding arranges for Mrs Callender to take him to the Marabar Caves in her car. Godbilly believes that to travel on a Tuesday is inauspicious and declines to join him. Unfortunately for Aziz, the excursion to the Marabar Caves does nearly destroy him because both Mrs Moore and Miss Quested are traumatised by their time there. Mrs Moore suffers from heat, claustrophobia and the echo of the Marabar Caves. This means that Mrs Moore encourages Aziz and Miss Quested to venture to the upper caves with only the guide for company. Halfway through the climb to the upper Marabar Caves, Miss Quested sees Chandrapur from a distance and it makes her realise that she does not love Heaslop. She questions Aziz about his own experience of love, managing to offend him when she asks him how many wives he has had. They separate, with Miss Quested going into a cave on her own. Miss Quested goes into the cave, and also into her own imagination. A short time later, Aziz sees her running, bloody and dishevelled down the hill. Miss Quested, having been cut by cacti and suffering from the echo of the caves, flees into Mrs Callender's car and is taken back to Chandrapur. Mrs Moore, 
who is still suffering from the effects of the caves, senses that something awful has happened. When Aziz tells Heron Fielding what he saw, they leave for Chandrapur straight away. On arriving in Chandrapur, Aziz is arrested on charges of attempted rape. The case goes to court, which reinforces the tensions between the British and Indian populations. With the exception of Fielding and Mrs Moore, the entire British Raj believe Aziz is guilty and the verdict is described as a foregone conclusion. Mrs Moore refuses to give evidence at the trial because of this and she leaves India before it starts. Fielding leaves the British club after Turton makes it clear that no one can be a member and support Aziz at the same time. As the trial progresses, Mrs Moore dies of a heart attack on her voyage home. The local Indian population, already outraged by Aziz's arrest, caused numerous disruptions to the trial. The tension between the English and the Indians builds when Aziz's defence discovers that the English have allowed Mrs Moore to leave India, as they believe she would have proven Aziz's innocence. Enraged, Muhammad Ali leaves the courtroom, not believing that the English have given Aziz a fair trial. Going outside, Muhammad Ali tells the crowd what has happened to Mrs Moore, and in their quest for justice, they chant her name repeatedly throughout the rest of the trial. The crowd is still chanting Mrs Moore when Miss Quested is called to give evidence. When she is questioned by McBride, she has flashbacks to her experiences in the cave. To the consternation of the British Raj, Miss Quested realises that her assault was something that she imagined. She admits to the court that Aziz never followed her into the cave. The accusation is withdrawn and Aziz is cleared of the charge, much to the delight of the Indian crowd. The Indians are ecstatic with their victory, which they consider to be a win for all Indians over their British oppressors. For her part, Miss Quested is ostracised by the British, Heeslop included. She becomes even more distraught at the news of Mrs Moore's death. Godbelly seems to have anticipated all of these events and after saying goodbye to Fielding, he leaves for Kashmir. When Fielding finds out that Aziz's lawyer wants Miss Quested to pay damages, Fielding pleads with Aziz to drop his charge, since the cost would ruin her. Although Aziz agrees not to make her pay, for him, Fielding's actions are confirmation that the English are all the same and stick together no matter what. Aziz's old resentments towards the English resurface and he wants nothing more to do with them. His friendship with Fielding falters and he relocates to Kashmir, well away from British-occupied India. Meanwhile, Fielding and Miss Quested both return to England. Fielding writes to Aziz, care of Godbelly. From the information Godbelly gives Aziz about Fielding's imminent visit, Aziz assumes that Fielding has married Miss Quested, who he has considered to be his enemy since his arrest. Aziz is reunited with Fielding against his wishes, but their friendship is renewed when Aziz learns that it was Mrs Moore's daughter Stella who Fielding married, and not Miss Quested. Realising the prejudices behind his assumptions, Aziz revises his opinion of Miss Quested and writes to her, asking for her forgiveness. Although Aziz knows that he won't see Fielding again, the idea that friendships can exist between the English and Indians persists and is the main message of a passage to India.